Hi Sam, welcome to part one of our Tamiya Honda NSX build before we get going today. So, make sure you subscribe to the channel, make sure you click the little bell notifications, get notified of all our latest videos, click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel. And of course, if you scroll up in the description, there's a link to a big long list of all the items I use in my videos. So if you see anything, you should be able to find it in there. Back with another video build. Um, we did have another video build planned. It was the Volt Mustang from Tamiya with the IndyCars decals, which partly through filming um, just cracked and fell apart. I have others I am waiting on from Blue Stuff. Um, the body's all fine. I managed to save and get the decal back off. So... We'll come back to that one in a few months, uh, and I have all the footage of the decals splitting. And we'll have a chat about indie cows because not impressed by them or their customer service, if I'm honest, which wasn't great. They will replace the decals, but if you want a refund, not as good. I did get a refund in the end, but we'll discuss this more in depth in uh, the later videos. So I pick this. It's quite an underrated car and kit i think i don't think tammy's box art does it justice it's a pretty car uh, i reviewed the kit last week so i'll put the link to review in the description or you can go back through the channel and find it and it looks to be a very very nice kit it's a 2016 kit so it's fairly new and it does look like it's going to go together really really well we picked red for this one it was a toss up between the red or the blue i'm going with the red because i've done way too many blue cars uh, so we're going with a red and we're going to look for a nice, deep, vibrant red. So we're going to showcase the new UMP Pink Primer today. Uh, we're going to use some LP paint on it. Uh, we're going to carbon the roof as well and get it all 2K clear coated. And then we can work on the chassis and the interior in the next videos and progress through the build as we always do. So let's crack on and let's get started. Okay, straight in with a new build and same old, same old. I start with the body. So we go through looking for all the... Panels are going to need attaching to the body before primer, or they're going to need painting in the body color separately. It's the way I always do it. Um, it saves a lot of heartache and mucking about because there's nothing worse than going through all that process of priming and painting to later on down the line notice you've missed out a part. I've done it many, many times, and I now check, double, triple check that I've got all the parts covered. Even if I sit there and read through the instructions three or four times, I'll just go through, mark them all, and make sure I've got them all ready. So we're going to cut a few parts off. So these are all body panels. See, so like I say, these either need attaching now. Uh, if we can get away with putting them on, we will, um, because it helps with the color match. Or if they need to be separately, um, we'll mount them and spray them as we go. Now, luckily, um, with some careful checking with the side panels and what have you, we're only going to have the body and the wing mirrors as two separate components to paint. And it makes life a lot easier and makes sure the color match is right throughout the build as well. Um, so as you can see, we've got these side panels here. We've got a engine cover at the back. There's two side panels on the front wings as well. Um, more importantly, though, on those side panels, um, there's some um, grill components and what we'll need paint in black later on. So I did want to leave them off because, A, I think it's messy gluing them on at the end. Uh, and B, getting the colour match right can be a bit of a pain sometimes. So I did have a little check in a bit, as you'll see. And I did manage to get them all glued on in place. So we've cut the parts off of our Tammy sprue cutters. We've got a UMP 400 customizable sander. These are fantastic for keeping a straight edge. And uh, I'm using them more and more now uh, on my just regular builds. Um, keeping that straight edge panel, the, the sander doesn't really flex or bend. It's absolutely superb, and the 400 grit is absolutely perfect for this job. So some light sanding. Check it every now and then. We don't want to go too far. As long as the um, screw locator point's gone, we're all good. And then we'll work our way around the body, picking off all their screw locator points as well. There's a few on this one. It's got a few strengthening pieces of plastic on the windows, the wheel arches, the engine deck, so on and so forth. So just take your time, work your way around, clean them up slowly as you go. Uh, obviously, preparation is key to getting a good finish here. So like I say, we remove the most of the Tamiya clippers. And then we'll come in with various sanders. So on this, we're using one of the two for, uh, 220 sponge thinnies. 
uh, ideal for getting in there. It conforms around the edge and the shape and doesn't flatten it off, which is the worst thing we could do here. And once we're happy that that's done, we come with a thinny buffer. First the blue side, then the white to polish it up. And that's that one done. So you have to repeat that on each one of those points. And then work away around to the windows. Now these are a little bit more tricky. So I found it easy to cut these off and then use a knife to get as close to the plastic as possible before sanding. Quite a tricky area to do, so take your time here. Um, yeah, really do take your time. It is an awkward area to do. So cut them off as close as you can. And then I use a knife just to trim the edge and then uh, come with our sander again. So we've got our mirrors there. Uh, I've drilled a hole into the sprue point. We can keep them on the sprue, luckily which again makes life a little bit easier. We'll put a 0.5 mil hole in there for a cocktail stick. There are some seam lines on the mirrors, so again, some careful sanding with that sponge sander. We'll take care of those. Once we're happy, they're all cleaned up. Pop a cocktail stick in there, make sure it's wedged fully home, and there we go, that's always ready to paint. So, a few components to glue on. So we've got this rear engine cover to start with. Just checking the fit, make sure it's located properly. And then we've got the side panels here. So these side ones, there are two internal components. One's clear um, and one is going to be yeah, semi-gloss black. So I'm checking to see if I can line it up properly without those components in. And then can we add them later on? And by looking at it, I can see that we can. So I'm happy to then glue these in place because to paint them afterwards black inside would be very tricky to do. And I think adding them once everything's painted and cleared um, isn't the best way to go personally. I don't like doing it. So if I can glue it on now, I will. And some careful application of my Tamiya Extra Thin Mix. Get it all lined up properly. Watching for fingerprints. There are enemy right now. We'll just carefully make sure it's all lined up. Once we're happy, we'll move on to the other side, rinse and repeat. So, as always, anything you see me using here, um, you'll find in the description of this video. Um, there's a big long list of products over on the forum. Um, I've tried to put links on as many of them as I can. So, if you see something I'm using, you can go over there. And this Tamiya Extra Thin mix I'm using is 50% Tamiya Extra Thin and 50% EMA, uh, EMA Plasti Weld, which again is a link in the description. So onto the other side now, we're just getting the rear part of it glued in and that engine cover as well. Again, careful application. We're not using a lot of glue at all. It might look like we are, but we're actually not. We're wiping most of it off. And just let the capillary action carry around. We don't want to see through through the top. We don't want to see any molten sprue or plastic or fingerprints. And here we go. These are the parts that you're putting in afterwards. I'm just checking that they will fit. And it does. You can see the two locator points for it. So happy with that, we can move on. So there's a seam line front to back on this. There's quite a long one. Uh, front bumper, rear uh, oh, rear quarter panel, I suppose. Over the roof, over the front wing, down the front bumper. So some of it you can see, some of it you can't. I do point all this out in my review, so if you want to go back and have a look. But well, careful use of that 220 thinny sponge and then our buffer will take care of all those seams. It's a bit laborious, a bit boring, but an important point to do. Um, and make sure you get through it. So, testing a uh, yeah a new sander here. That's all I'm going to say at the minute. Um, I like to scuff up the bodies before primer. I often use the 3M pads, but this is a different one. And this works really well. Um, so stay tuned for that one. That's all I'm going to say at the minute. As you can see, it's a sponge pad. And work my way around the body. All I do is dull the plastic. I don't want any shiny plastic at all. Um, this leaves no scratch marks or anything on there at all. It just dulls all that plastic nicely and keys it for our primer in a bit. Also removes all those surface imperfections, any glue marks, anything that shouldn't be there. And again, yeah, a little five minute run around with this. We're using it dry as well. You could use it wet if you wished. Um, I've not tried it wet yet. I will next time. But all we're doing is scuffing up all that surface. So we get a nice key for our primer. And like I say, we know all those marks have gone. Fingerprints, any glue marks are all gone. And then once we wipe it over in a minute, we know we've got a fully prepped body ready for primer. So as I always say, and I do repeat it a lot, preparation is king. 
the more you prep this properly and clean it up, the better finish you'll get at the end. Um, so it's time well spent. It can be a bit boring, but find some friends to chat with, put an album on, music on, um, whatever. Watch a YouTube video while you're doing it. Just something to while it away. Being in a hangout with all the guys is great for stuff like this um, because it just takes your mind off what you're doing. So once we're happy that's all scuffed up, we run an old toothbrush, go around all the panel lines and any recessed areas, wiping out any dust. We then got some clean kitchen paper, some UMP cleaner, mine's in a separate bottle. And we're just going to put it on and wipe over the entire body. And this will get rid of any residue, any dust, any fingerprints, any oils, anything that's left on that surface that may contaminate our primer or paint. And this is a step I think a lot of people miss out, cleaning up the surface after it's been manhandled. It's all well and good clean up before. It's completely pointless in my opinion. Um, washing your sprues is a job that doesn't need doing anymore. But once you've been handling it for days or even weeks on end, now is an important time to give this a full wipe over because the oil off your fingers is worse than most other things that are on there. So just carefully go around, wipe it all, dry it off. Good to go. So we've got some of our UMP pink primer. I've mixed in some white and yellow into this to lighten the touch. Out the bottle, it's great for a darker red, but for a vibrant red like we've got here today, it does need lightening a bit, and we do recommend thinning it with a touch of white. It doesn't need a lot, um, and the yellow just deepens it a bit. So you could use yellow primer, a bit of yellow paint, a bit of Tamiya paint, and it does work. People have used it, and it does work. So in here, I've got 70% um, UMP white, 25% pink, and about 5% of yellow. So it doesn't need a lot of yellow at all. And even if you don't use yellow, just put uh, white in there with the pink, it's it's still a nice shade of pink. So through the UMP Apex, 0.35 or 25 PSI. I'm going to put a couple of light coats down and then a heavier coat in the end to give this a full primer all around. So as you can see, again, as always with our primers, it covers really well. You just got to get that first coat down, not too heavy. I want you to cover your subsequent co uh, coats. You just want it. As you see, we're not flooding it on, taking our time, just misting it over the body. And by the time you've gone round one side, it comes to the other, it'll already be ready for another coat. It doesn't take long to dry at all. You can use your airbrush to dry it off with a bit of air as well. Don't forget any other components you've got to spray, like wing mirrors, which we've got to do. Um, and spray them at the same time, the same number of coats. That way you get the same even colour all the way through the build. And it's just a good process to use. Yep, going down my Like I say, the out of the bottle colour, it's a bit darker than this. It's great for a darker red. Um, to get that vibrancy when you've got a lighter red, it does need a slightly lighter pink, which is why I mixed it. Um, I did a test on some spoons the other day, and you could see the slight tonal variation between the different reds. Uh, I used the same colour on three different spoons, and uh, you could see the difference between a dark and a light pink primer. So, yeah, mix a bottle of this up, just grab a bottle of white if you've got it. Uh, if it's near empty or whatever, just add a few drops of pink in so you get a colour that you're happy with. And there you go, you've got a bottle of it ready to go, and you've still got your bottle of your original colour too. So two primers out of one. Always a benefit, always a bonus. Oh, wow, it's not the best ideal situation. Um, Tamiya Pink Primer is unavailable in the UK. It's not officially imported at all, um, which is a bit of a shame, really, because it is a good primer. But now we stock this at UMP. I'm more than happy because, well, we've got a supply forever. Like I say, we've gone over now, it's pretty even first coat all over. Just checking I haven't missed anywhere, and then we'll put it to one side for a bit, and let it dry, and then come back and put our second coat on, and then our third. I usually go three, four coats, depends on the colour. If I do white, I'll do four. If it's black or grey, it's usually three, and this pink one, because it covers so well, I think it'll just be three as well. So just give it another light go over, just to make sure it's all even. You see, I'm not spraying a lot at all. There's hardly any paint coming out. And I'm looking, just looking for any spots where the primer's not quite covered. Once you're happy, put it on side for five, ten minutes. And then come back and I'll put the second coat on. 
as we're about to do now. So, like I say, do your wing mirrors at the same time. Any other components. That way you know the colour's right, even at the same amount of coat. You're not going to get any mismatches when you put the parts back on. So, I took this opportunity while the car body was drying uh, for our first coat to spray up some spoons because I knew I was going to be testing the red colours out. Um, this is the lightened colour of primer and then we're going to pick three different LP reds and then pick our favourite one to go with on the build itself. I was looking for a nice, vibrant, bright red. So I picked three out. Like I say, a couple of coats on the spoons. Again, same prep as we do on the body. Scuff her up a bit, wipe her over some UMP cleaner and then primer, it would be just great. And I think this is after our third coat of primer now. As you can see, we've got some great coverage. Not forgetting to all those inner recesses, wheel arches, the door pillars, everything inside as well. Not the whole body, just anywhere that can be seen. I'm just making sure you get good coverage. Now, once you get into your second or third coat, you start putting down a little bit thicker. This is where the self-loving properties come in and any imperfections on that surface. We've got covered. As you can see, we've got a bit of a wet coat down there. It's just fine now, no problem at all. Still don't flood it on because it can still go too far. Right, so our spoons are dried and we've got LP21, LP7 and LP50. So I've already used 21. I know it's a nice vibrant red. We're going to thin them with the Tami Aleka Thin and Potada. Through the Apex, we've got some medicine cups to mix them as well. And we're going to do a 70-30 mix. So it's 70% thinner. 30% paint so that works out I think roughly top of my head it would be like 10 mil of paint 13 mil of thinner I might be wrong I can't remember now I completely forget my um, calculations but we spray them one at a time I'm not going to show them all being sprayed because that would be a bit boring but we've got one there I think that's the LP21 no it's not it's LP50 <laughs> and writing on the back of the spoon it's very handy write the, the paint colour number and the primer used as well because I've got dozens of these as reference. You can go back and look. Um, for a sharpie on the back, job done. So we do that for all three. This is the results we've got. So that's the LP21, a little bit too dark for me. We've got the LP50, nice color, nice red color. And I've got the LP7, that is the color I'm looking for. Very nice vibrant red, deep red as well. And you can see the great gloss finish off the LP so yeah we've got three great colors but for me the middle LP7 gets the vote the LP50 is a nice vibrant red it really is nice but yeah, LP21 lovely deep red but I think that LP7 perfect color you see the nice gloss coat we got off that as well very nice So, LP7, we've got a full bowl, we've got our lacquer thinner with retarder, painted a down niche pipette retention system on the side, and I know this is only going to get used for more than likely car bodies because there's nothing else I paint red. So we're going to thin the entire bottle, use what we use, pop it back in the bottle and mark it as thinned for a later date. So we're giving a really good mix up of our Badger paint mixer because the painters like to settle on the base. Like I say, we're going to thin the entire bottle. So all 10 mil of paint. Out we go. You're always going to be left with remnants in the bottle. So we've got 10 mil of paint. We're going to chuck all our thinner in here. So we'll Chuck all the thinner in. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. So it was four, two and a half mils, and the last one was three mil. We'll give it a quick whiz up. That'll get rid of any other paint that's in there. Make the most out of our paint bottle. And then we'll pour it in. To our mix. There you go, as you can see, pretty clean bottle there. We'll give it a good whiz up with the mixer. Obviously, I'm not going to use all this on this build, so we'll pour some of it back in the bottle for a later date. You can see, I do like to give my paint a really good mix. And there we go. So, let's summon the medicine cup. 
Always give your rim a clean. Always good to have a clean rim. And then we grab our Sharpie again. I'm just write T on the label. Let me know it's thinned for a later date. So, like I said, we're going to use that on cars. So I know it's there, ready to go. And here we are with our bodywork. So, we're going to apply several light coats. We're going to build up as we go. I'm going to play some music for most of it. Uh, I'm only going to show two of the coats, so we'll show the first and the last. But you'll see just how well this covers over the pink primer. You get depth instantly. Coverage is really good. It does save time and get a really bright, vibrant colour. There we go, so three coats later, we've got a nice deep red, vibrant colour there. We've got a few bits of muck and dust in there, which we'll sand off before we go to clear coat. But very happy with that colour, really nice. Now we're going to decal the roof in carbon, so we've got some micro uh, set here for putting our decal on. We've got some of the scale motorsport um, decal film there as well, the 24 scale carbon weave. We've got our decal solutions out there as well, uh, the UMP strong, extra strong uh, and normal. And we've got our decal tray heater, our coffee heater, which our decal is soaking in right now. So a few seconds in there, in the warm water, it soon releases this, so take it off, we'll pop it on. And there we go, so that is it. So now our job is to work out any excess liquid from underneath, get rid of those creases on the edge, which are gonna inevitably form, and then trim it to our roof. So we're definitely doing the roof, obviously. I did contemplate doing the um, bonnet or hood, if you're American, and the trunk or boot, but I thought it might be a bit too much. So I thought we'll do the roof and then we'll do the side skirts as well. I did ask everyone on the Facebook group what they thought. I think 90% of the people said, yeah, do the side skirts as well. Uh, the skirts were a little bit tricky to do. Uh, the roof was pretty easy uh, at the end of the day. But all we're doing is just working out any excess fluid from underneath, pushing it into the panel lines, as you can see. This stuff is phenomenal um, to use. It can take some abuse. It really conforms well. Um, it is very, very good decal film. So we've got most of that with the brush. Now we're coming in with a moistened cotton bud. And we're just easing everything out to leave as little creases as we possibly can. And then we're going to list some music while I carry on and do the rest.
there we go. That's the top part on. You watch that in double speed, but real time. So you can see it took me about eight minutes in total to get it down. Side pieces, uh, I managed to get on in one piece. So one careful application, a careful couple of cuts. Really just take your time. Nice brand new sharp knife blade as well. Um, cut them around where you want them and peel it back gently. And then again, setting it. We only set it with the normal UMP solution. These do set really easy. But once it's all in and I'm happy, I will hit it once with the strong and then remove any excess once we're done, just so I know doubly sure that it is set in place. So, yeah, we work these ones just like we did the roof, um, get all the mush out from underneath them, use a cotton bud to get it to all conform, and the brush, and then hit it with the normal solutions until it conforms to all those edges, recesses, and panel lines. Nice, quick, easy, and simple. And as you can see, the finger is a very good tool as well for getting the decals to set. Don't be afraid to get in there. And as you can see, very happy with that job. They've come out really well on all sides. And once we get a wash in there, uh, the panel lines will all be tied up together and it'll look absolutely fantastic. So very happy with that. A nice touch, nice bit of detail to the body without going too far. So we've got some Tamiya panel line accent now as well. We're going to use this. It's an enamel based. We're going to give it a panel line wash all over. Let the capo reaction carry it around. Let it dry. And remove any excess once we're done so we are going to carbon some other parts on the car as well these aren't the only parts there's a lot of black parts on it including the diffuser at the back which would be a bit of a mammoth task to do but i'm always up for a challenge we will give that one a go as well um, and we'll pick some more components i don't want to go too ott with the parts um, but i want to add some nice accent points to the build so I think a bit of the 24 scale carbon will work really well. So as you can see, the nice gloss lacquer paint is allowing the wash to capillary flow no problem at all. We're just touching it and it flows into the panel lines. It takes about 10, 15 minutes to dry. Then we can come back in with a cotton bud, some tissue and some mineral spirits to remove any excess we want. As long as your decals are properly sealed down, and pushed into those panel lines, I've not had a problem to this day. Our decal uh, washed right over decals with no protection on them at all and never had an issue full stop. But again, it's getting those decals to set properly in the panel lines. Uh, it's why I always run over with the strong solution once the normal's done. So I know that they are definitely, definitely set and not going to lift. Because in the past, a long time ago, um, using Microset and Sol, I've had a few decals actually lift under the 2k where the edges haven't quite been um down and the 2k's got underneath and lifted them up so once it's dry or very nearly dry is a good little tip come in with your cotton bud once you get a little bit of wash on there that hasn't quite dried it'll then take all the other wash off without removing any excess um wash or needing any mineral spirit so it's a good tip if you can catch it just in time you won't need any thinners whatsoever but we do on this we need a couple of spots here and there there's a lot of panel lines on this so we've got some Santador from uh, Windsor & Newton, odorless mineral spirit, tiny, tiny drop. Does not need a lot at all. I'm just going to use this bit of kitchen paper to very, very gently rub over the panel lines. No pressure at all, just to remove that excess wash. And again, adds depth. Nobody likes this. I wasn't a fan of it for a long, long time. It's definitely growing on me, and I do prefer the look of the panel line now. There we are. I'm chatting to somebody there, pointing at something. <laughs> so once that's dried overnight, 24 hours at least, especially for the decals and the wash, uh, 48 is better. We've got our Gravity 2K Clear. So the first video there was 6mm of the clear, 2mm of hardener, and 2mm of our thinner going in now as well. Now, add the third clear and the hardener together, the 6 and the 2 mil. Very confusing this now. And stir those to mix them to get the activator to start working. Then put in your 2 mil thinner. And again, stir it to get a nice, clear consistency of clear coat. So as you can see, we're all protected up here. My left arm is covered. I'm double gloved on the left hand. Single gloved on the right with nitrile gloves. Uh, we've got my respirator on, which is a full face 
respirator. Again, you can find the links to all these products in the description of the video. We've got a paint strainer. Whilst it might not do it out the factory, you do get bits of hardener dry on the lid. And I do like to give it a strain to make sure none of these little bits go in and open the clear coat. I've used less higher quality clear coats before that's happened. Uh, I won't name any names, but I don't use the product anymore. It was a while back. Um, and I started doing this, I started using the Pro Range with the Gravity, and I had no issues at all. So, there we go, we're all mixed, we're ready to go. The airbrush is ready to go. We're given uh, bodywork and anti static brush. I find this is a very good step to do. Tamiya anti static brush is an invaluable tool, it's all over the body and the mirrors. Apex is a 20 psi, 0.35, and um, we're ready to go. So, we're going to apply a tack coat. Now, I wasn't having the best of mornings, and this was about 7.30 a.m. in the morning because I had a live stream to do that day, and I needed to get this done, leave the room for an hour, wait off gas for a bit to come back. So I was out here early, I was a little bit distracted, and I put my tack coat on a little bit wetter than I wanted. So, first coat, you can always get any muck out of there. There's a little hair just landed in there. First tack coat. And even the second wet coat, sometimes you can grab bits at land in there, be careful. We'll get it in the end. You ready? Ready? Any second? No. 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 Yep. There we go. Wipe on your glove. Oh, no. It's still there. No. Yep. There we go. Now we've got it. Yeah, there it is. Little bugger. Right. So, yeah, we're coming slightly wetter than we should. I was going to try a slightly wetter mix after watching a video the other day on 2K. And I did intend to put it down a little bit wetter than normal, but I was literally like a step away from a full wet coat back. So not quite concentrating, a little bit distracted. As happens, everyone makes mistakes. And I did come in too wet. Now, you're committed here. There's no going back from this. As you can see there, I'm like, oh crap. That is way too wet. It takes a few seconds for it to level before you can see it. And I've realized now I've stopped putting it on way too heavy. So... It's like, right, okay, no going back, so we'll do the same everywhere. So this is almost a full wet coat on the taco, which shouldn't be at all. So I've kind of made a mistake. I'm kind of thinking now I've ruined this. I'm thinking it's either going to eat the decals alive, which it shouldn't do because there's not a lot of thinner in there. But I've never put a tack coat on this wet before. Or I'm going to get an adverse reaction, or the 2K is going to go weird on me. So right now I'm like, yeah. That is way too wet. Let's put a bit more on. <laughs> um, there's no going back from this. So let's uh, let's make the best of a bad situation. I've got to match it all up all around now. That is my plan now. So it's a little bit there, not quite the same as the bonnet or the uh, the roof. So let's give it all the same kind of coat. And yeah, it's way too wet. We go. We're just going to continue with our mistake. Put that wet coat down all over. It's it's literally like a step away from the wet coat. Just a little bit of orange peel left behind. But like I said, there's no going back from this now. So it is what it is. So I thought, right, there we go. You can just see the touch of orange peel in that finish. It's just a step away from that full wet coat. So I think I stopped it just in time. But this is what happens when you're distracted. You're not playing paying full attention or you're tired or whatever it does happen we've all been there and done it um so make the best of a bad situation so we put this to one side for 10 minutes half expecting to come back to a room model and i'm pleasantly surprised to see okay actually looks really good so let's come in with our wet coat now i normally do a tack coat and two wet coats and i'm thinking right we've already got a good coat on so let's just put another wet coat on and we'll leave it be again i'm still thinking this is not going to look great once it's dry. Hopefully I can pull it back with some polishing and what have you. But learn from your mistakes and maybe find a different way of doing things. So it does work out well in the end, thankfully. Um, but I was a bit worried at one point where I started to weigh up my options. Like I have to get another kit, another body, start again, which is an absolute nightmare. Um, but I'm thinking, right, we'll roll with it for now. Let's get our second wet coat down. And we'll leave it then. We'll leave it to dry for an hour or two, let it self level, and let's see what it does. So we're coming in, we're putting our wet coat down. So this is probably what the first wet coat would normally be like, this kind of heavy. Um, as you can see, we're getting a nice gloss finish there already. 
The idea of the taco really is um, to get a sticky finish for the Weko to the run when they come in. So I think I stopped just in time. The worst, One of the worst things you can get is a run because it's a nightmare. It really, really is an absolute pain in the backside. On a full-size car, it would be, you know, be a pain. On something this small, it really is glaringly obvious. So there we go. We've gone around with our wet coat. I'm very happy with that finish. We've got some dust in there as usual. It's uh, pretty much impossible to do to get no dust. Put the roof on the uh, spray booth as helped. 100% helped more. But it is inevitably going to happen. So we're doing our usual inspection now. Having a little look around to make sure we haven't missed anywhere. All looks good. All looks nice and glossy. We've hit all the right places. All the angles have been covered. And I'm happy with that. So I think we might get away with it. Let's put it under cover in our plastic box for an hour or two. And come back and have a look. And there we go. This is a couple of hours later. And yeah, there is nothing wrong with that. That is fine. We were very, very lucky there. Really, really lucky. And it's a lesson learned for next time. Pay attention to what you're doing. Literally pay attention. It's probably a tad too heavy um, because we had to get that second wet coat down. Once we flat it and polish it, it'll give it a much more scale look. So very lucky result there. It just shows you pay attention to what you're doing. Well, uh, that was a lucky escape. It really was. It just shows you, as I've just said, what happens when you're not fully concentrating on what you're doing. That nearly went very, very wrong. Like I say, I had planned, I generally planned to do a slightly wetter taco, but not that wet. And once we put it down, it was committed. I had to make sure it all matched up all around, otherwise it would have looked a bit odd later on. So thankfully, it stopped just in time before we got any runs or any problems. And Touchwood has seemed to have gotten away with it. It's come out really well and it looks really good. So thankfully, that's it. So like I said, three times now, pay attention to what you do. So easy to get distracted, uh, especially with what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it, it's so easy to get distracted. It was early in the morning, I was rushing because I had a live feed to do, which again, I shouldn't have done really. Um, I should take my time, but we got away with it. We definitely did. So that's going to cure now for at least a week, probably a bit longer. We're going to crack on with the interior and the chassis. I'm probably going to do the interior next. We'll do it a different way around than normal. Uh, I normally do the chassis next, but I think we'll go with the interior and we'll start from there this time. Not 100% sure of the interior colour yet. I'm going to play this one by ear. Again, we're playing everything by ear again. Um, I don't know. I'm going to have a look around a few different colours and see what I can decide on, but I've definitely not decided on that yet. So, any suggestions, pop them in the comments down below. Uh, I'll, I'll listen to everyone's opinions. Uh, I've got a few ideas in mind, but we'll play. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll play by ear because not too much. We'll have a look around, look at some original cars and see what interiors they come with and see what they look like. Oh, bless you. There's Hannah sneezing in the shed. Um... So yeah, there we go. That's us for today. We'll be back probably in ooh, maybe a week with part two. Um, as always, make sure you sub to the channel. Click the bell notifications. Get notified of all the latest videos. Give it a thumbs up. And make sure you leave a comment down below. I do read and reply to all the comments. And do appreciate everybody that takes the time to do so. Thank you very much for all the support you give us. Uh, and as always, anything you see me using in this video, you can find in the description of the video on a big list of products, which you can get a lot of them from UMPRetail.com, myself and Lee's business. Check out the Facebook page and forum, International Scale Modeler, my Paul ISM Facebook page where all my personal modeling work goes, the Live of the Bench page and our Hangout group. Um, all these are linked in the description. You just scroll down, you see links for every single one. And uh, I will see you very soon for part two. So thanks for watching. Catch you all later.